Let's do something fun. Um, there's a QR code up there. Uh, if you scan that right now and you don't have Bright ID installed, it should take you to the App Store. If it doesn't take you to the App Store, then just look up Bright ID, all one word, on the App Store and get Bright ID because this is going to be hands-on. We're going we're gonna to do some stuff together for this and it's going to be fun. So if you do have Bright ID, you can scan that code from Bright ID. Um, if you go to, I'll show you real quick, if you go back and you go to scan a code, you can scan this code. And if you've never made a group connection in Bright ID, this is how you do it. You flip the switch up at the top over to the right and then you, that turns it into a group code and you can make group connections. So we're all going to connect to each other. The weird thing that's going on right now, though, is that this is also being live streamed, so it's possible that someone might connect to us, connect to our group over the live stream, and we're not going to know who that is. And so we're going to mark them as suspicious if, if someone tries. So if you're sitting at home enjoying this, uh, don't bother connecting. We're just going to swipe left if we see you connect. So, But for the rest of us, um, there's kind of this, uh, this, here, let me get back to this. There's this myth going around that was made up by people who have never used Bright ID, that Bright ID doxes people. But those of us that have used Bright ID know that that's not true. Because what I want you to do when you connect to that, um, use a picture of your cat or an avatar and use a pseudonym. Because it doesn't matter. When you make a connection on Bright ID, you're connecting peer to peer with the other people in the group. And so it never leaves the group or it never leaves the person that you're connecting with. Uh, that name and photo never does. And that goes with this, uh, this mantra for privacy. If you want complete privacy, just never share anything with anybody that doesn't already know it. Um, and then if you, if you want maybe not complete privacy but good privacy, then just make sure that whatever you share with someone, that they don't share it further. And then let me give you an example of that. So let's say you make a connection on LinkedIn. and in real, You meet someone in real life, you connect on LinkedIn. Who knows where that is going? Like that's going up to LinkedIn servers, could be shared anywhere. You don't know, you lose control of that. With Bright ID, um, if, you, uh, if you make a connection with someone on Bright ID, it stops with that person. It doesn't go to any central server somewhere. It's peer-to-peer. -peer. So that's, uh, that's our approach to privacy. And we take it very seriously. Um, and in Bright ID, at, like what you want is you ideally want to be verified by someone that you already know. That's the best situation. So that you don't have to share anything new. If you're going to get a passport, you'll sit in a room and someone will ask for a bunch of identifying information. You'll hand it over to them. And where does it go after that? You don't know, could go all over the place. And you, you lose control of that, so you don't want that. Um, so, for those of us that are making connections, this might not be working because the network's bad in here. I, uh, I was gonna say I'm sorry, but it's not my fault. But the network's bad in here. So, uh, anyways, if you make a connection, this is what it looks like. It'll show up something like this, and uh, you get to pick are they suspicious, like not in the room? Are they someone you just met or someone you already know? And what, what do you end up with? So what does a connection actually mean? What you end up with is you end up with this graph. It looks like this. You, uh, this is what it looks like to me. There's a lot of faces and uh, names and some of these are pseudonyms. Um, some of these, like, you know, these are not people's real names. But that's cool. Like, there's probably some cat pictures in here. I don't care. That's fine. Um, this is what it looks like to me. This is what it looks like to, uh, oh, that's weird. OK. This is, <laughs> this is what it looks like to someone who's new or has never made a Bright ID connection. It's just a bunch of empty dots with lines connecting them. Um, and to apps, it basically, it looks dark. It's just. You know, like a, like a new tab, it's nothing. 
um, because apps don't even get to see your bright ID. They don't even get that. What they get is a is a signed verification from a bright ID node that tells them that hey, we've 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 traversed this graph, we've run the protocol, and this is a unique person that, that's coming to your app. And through the magic of blind signatures, they don't even see which dot you are. They just see that one of these verified dots came to their app, and it hasn't already been there. So like I said, we take privacy very seriously. Uh, so let's see. But hey, look at this. Paul is connecting. Paul, all right. Paul in the front row. Let's reconnect with Paul. It worked. We got the, we got the Wi-Fi to work. Good enough to make a connection. This is awesome. OK. So yeah. That's what it looks like. So anyways, what does it mean when we make a connection? Like when Paul and I just connected, what does that mean? Uh, we saw the graph that it builds. But there's some, and, and then uh, we use something. It, the first thing we used was civil rank to traverse the graph and make decisions about whether someone's a unique human or not. But there's problems with that because um, what, uh, if, if there's a node in the graph that is a, um, like a seed node, like some of these nodes are really important and, uh, and they, they basically are pre-trusted parts of the graph so that Bright ID nodes, like, they know that if trust flows out from there, if you connect, if you're, if you're connected in the right way to maybe a couple hops down or whatever the case may be um, to one of these seed nodes, then you allowed, you're allowed to get verified. But that is not necessarily transitive because if I, if I know Paul and Paul knows uh, Sasha and I don't know Sasha, like that doesn't necessarily mean that I know Sasha. So it's not a transitive relationship. So can we do better than that? And that's where Aura comes in, and I want to spend the rest of the time talking about Aura. So Aura is an improvement on the Bright ID verification system, and it's a way to ensure that uh, that people who are um, sibyls don't get allowed. So who knows what a sibyl is? Raise your hand if you've ever heard that term sibyl. So a lot of you have heard that term sibyl, and I I credit that to Gitcoin for raising the awareness of what a sibyl is. Because when I gave a talk four years ago, nobody knew what a Sybil was. So this is great that like half the people in here already know what a Sybil is and what a Sybil attack is and why we need to defeat things like this. So the problem is that our regular old people, like our regular, regular old Bright ID users that are making these connections and that they understand, this is as far as they're able to go. They know how well they know you, uh, but they're not looking for Sybils. They're not actively, like, they may not realize if you come back and connect to them the next day with a different, with a different account, because that's not what they're there for. They're there to collect the thing. They're there to vote on Gitcoin. They're there to go to Unitap and collect tokens, and that's as far as it goes. They just want to be Bright ID verified. That's totally cool. Like that's that's fine for Bright ID people, to, uh, users to do that. But we we need to go beyond that if we want really good civil protection. So with Aura, we have a subset of users. Um, so they, these are made up numbers, but let's say there's a thousand Bright ID users, but there's, there's really a hundred thousand, but out of every thousand Bright ID users, um, that there's a hundred Aura players. It might be less, it might be more. We're just getting started with Aura, so we don't know, but there's some subset that care and are willing to go beyond and learn, um, like analyze the graph and, and learn themselves, like what is a civil attack and how can we stop it? Those are the Aura players. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like if you're an Aura player and you're using Aura. So your friends, your connection list, rather than just saying how well you know them, you review them and you look at that account and you look at the evidence that you have and based on the evidence that you have, you answer a very different question. Is this the account of theirs that should be verified? Or did they have a duplicate account? Maybe they lost uh, the ability to recover their other account. And so this isn't their account that should be verified. So you can answer that yes or no. And then you can uh, state your confidence on it. And you can also, for other, um, for other Aura players, you can leave notes. Or you can leave notes for yourself. Like, what did you think about that, uh, that person? Did you get good vibes? Did you get bad vibes? Why? Why do you feel that way? Like, what evidence are you bringing to the table? 
And uh, we, we have this, uh, this is Aura, Aura is live. If you go to aura.brightid.org, you can use it. You can log in with your Bright ID and start using it. You'll be given a list of all your connections. And from there, you can um, actually, you can rate your connections. And let me show you an example of what it might be like if you're rating someone. What evidence do you have? What might you look at? So one of the most important things to look at is mutual connections. You want to see who do we know in common? Um, so I can see here, they've got social recovery set up. Um, they made a connection four months ago. These are good signals. These are telling me there's a good chance that this person still has access to their account. I look at who do I know that has connected to this person? Um, I see a bunch of people that I know that have connected to this person. So I'm, I'm getting all this evidence that leads me to go back here and uh, you know, give them a good, a good high confidence rating. So I can give, with all that evidence, I can, I can give them high confidence. And what that ends up doing is that, that creates a new graph. And um, this graph is kind of messed up. But these blue lines are uh, connecting to other Aura players. And then the orange lines are connecting to people that the Aura players are verifying. Um, Aura players are sending each other energy around the graph. And then they're also evaluating people and helping them get verified in Aura. So as an Aura player, your first job is to go through your list of friends and get them Aura verified so they can use all the cool stuff that they want to use, do all the cool things. Like maybe there's um, some free tokens to give out in Unitap that you have to be Aura verified to get. You can, uh, you can help your friends get those. So there's these intrins intrinsic rewards for helping people to get Aura verified. And that's what you're doing as an Aura player. And like I said, not everybody's going to do that. It's going to be a small fraction of the Bright ID users that are going to be Aura players. And then for Aura to grow, some of those Aura play players have to not just rate their friends, they have to help other Aura players join. So maybe out of, out of your 20 friends that you've helped to get Aura verified, you, you recognize that one or two, they might be good Aura players themselves. So you train them, you go to the next track, and you start training them, and you show them how to use Aura. And I've done this a bunch of times. I've shown people how to use Aura and how, how to get their friends verified. And then as an Aura manager, what you do is you kind of have this, maintain this bird's eye view of the whole graph, or at least the graph around you, to see how energy is being sent, see how people are playing the Aura game, and if they're doing a good job. And what you end up with is, um, uh, a, a way to evaluate other Aura players, which is called energy. And this is that inner graph that I was talking about before. So this inner graph of Aura players and that relationship, the edges in that graph have to do with um, a transitive relationship, which is how good of an Aura player are you? So if I think you're a good Aura player, most of the people I'm rating on Aura are not Aura players. They're just regular Bright ID users. But if I'm rating an Aura player, I need to know are they a good Aura player? In other words, are they rating, helping other people get verified correctly? And are they rating other Aura players correctly? So this is actually a transitive relationship because if I think, if I'm here and I think this person is a good Aura player, that means that I think that they're doing the right things with these other Aura players that are adjacent to them. So it is transitive. And you can use things like Sybil Rank in a much more effective way. And then here on the edge, these, um, these regular Bright ID users, all they need to do is connect to an Aura player. So if you've ever, if you've ever gotten Bright ID verified before, you know how it works. It kind of works like what we did today, where um, we made this group connection. And I'll show the code again in case any of you came late. You can uh, scan this code with your Bright ID and get connected to us. But you get verified by making connections like that. But the problem is, you can be a Bright ID tourist. You can, you can uh, get verified by one group of people, and then you can go somewhere else, use a different phone, and get verified again. So we call it uh, a meet verification, and it's a low-level verification because, um, because you can do small-scale Sybil attacks with it. But large-scale Sybil, you can't just sit in your basement and create hundreds of Sybils, but you can go around and, and uh, get verified multiple times. But with Aura, it's different. Instead of going to a connection party with a bunch of random people and getting this low-level verification, you find someone that you already know that's an Aura player, or they'll find you. 
and they help you and they get you Aura verified and you get a high level verification because they've done the research. So that's what Aura is all about. It's about uh, helping people get verified, sending energy to other Aura players. It's an expert system. It's a decentralized self-selecting system of experts that are helping people to get Bright ID verified. And so we really think that this is the future of uh, unique human verification. But Aura can go beyond that to other things. So unique human accounts is just one domain of this decentralized expert system of experts selecting other experts in a decentralized graph. Uh, we're running a pilot pro program with Gitcoin where we're moving Gitcoin grants from being just this sort of like closed, close-knit group of fraud detect like fraud analysis people that review every Gitcoin grant to being something that's open and potentially decentralized where experts can bring in other experts and evaluate how well they're doing using Aura. So it's not just for unique human accounts. You can, uh, you can evaluate how well people are doing evaluating Gitcoin grants. Another thing is NFT valuations. So you could, you could get, uh, there could be some uh, NFT that has a bunch of cool traits, but no one's exactly sure how it should be evaluated. And maybe only experts know how to do this. But who are those experts? And, and who do we trust? And how do we know how to find them? Aura can help with that. Aura can, uh, you can have this decentralized self-selecting group of experts in any domain. They could, anything you can think of, anything where an expert set should be decentralized. That's where Aura can shine. So what, what's, the, what, what's the next actions that we can do? We got a Discord. If you want to try out being an Aura player and take that next step and go a little bit further on Bright ID than just being a regular Bright ID user, if this is interesting to you and you want to join the, the civil defense army that we're forming and be an Aura player, you can do that. Help all your friends get verified for that next best thing. All right, look at this. We got another one. Um, all right, I want to make sure this isn't someone from the live stream. Yes, all right, we're good. We just met, glad to meet you. Okay, this is, this is beautiful, this is what it's all about. So scan the code if you wanna, um, if you wanna join our group. Um, so anyways, uh, let me go back to my code. Okay. Uh, if you wanna join our Discord, that's what this code is. That's to join our Discord, the Aura Discord, where you can learn more about it. And if you want to form an energy team, if you think that you and your friends are going to be the best Aura civil defenders on the planet, then come sign up and uh, start your own energy team. If you've got a cool new idea for a domain, if you're, if you're like, hey, we're doing the, a restaurant review site and we want the set of experts that review it to be decentralized, come sign up with a new domain with us. If you're an app that says, I want better civil protection, Bright ID Meets was okay, but we want Bright ID Aura now. It's as easy as just changing a parameter in the URL. You can start asking Bright ID nodes for Aura verification instead. So let us help you figure that out. Uh, I think that's it. I got a little bit of time for questions. Do we have a mic? We got a mic there. So does anyone have a question on anything that, we, that I talked about? Right here. That mic not working? Oh man, they gave us a mic that didn't work. Can you hear me? Oh, oh that's working there we now. Go. All right, there All we right. go. There we go. Um, so maybe you mentioned this before, yeah. but is there an, an incentive for Aura players to verify other people? Like, that's a great, is, great I question. Like. I love that question. So let's go back to this, uh, these different Aura roles. So if you're just at the Aura player level and you're just helping your friends and, and like family and, and people that you know get verified, we think that people will do that and we hope because we gotta have a lot of, a lot of Aura players, even though they're like maybe just 1% of the whole Bright ID population, that's still a lot. It's still like thousands of people right now. Um, awesome, this is great, we just got another one in. Um, so Etienne, are you here, raise your hand? Yes, all right, cool, I love this, okay. So if you're, um, if you're just starting out being an Aura player, your incentive is, let's say you went to Unitap and you got like $50 worth of cool tokens. You want your friends to get that too. 
So you're Aura Verified, you want to help them get Aura Verified. That's your starting incentive. Then when you start moving along these tracks, you start becoming an Aura Trainer, an Aura Manager, you're actually monitoring other Aura players. I think you need more of an incentive than just, because now you're, you're like monitoring the whole system and making sure things are working well. So what we have is uh, that energy that I talked about that gets passed around in the graph. So that energy, uh, you en what you end up with is you end up with um, some people, I don't know if this is gonna work because the Wi-Fi connection is so bad, but um, like, uh, let's see. Okay, so yeah, we have a leaderboard, right? So there's um, the, the most awesome Aura players are at the top, and that's, that's the opinion of the other Aura players. Like they're giving, you, they're giving their energy around. Um, you, don't, you can't hoard energy, you can only give it. So what, what do other Aura players think of other Aura players? That's kind of this, so you can, there's a leaderboard. So what you could do, let's say that you're an application that absolutely depends on Aura verification. What you can do is you can, you can drop in uh, a donation, I guess you could call it, and, um, or a grant into the Aura bucket for these Aura players that could get proportionally distributed to how well they're playing. So the people who are the best trainers, the best Aura managers that are at the top will, will earn the most. So we haven't solved the problem of like how to get people donating into that bucket, but we know how to distribute it. Does that help? All right, cool. Um, okay, I think I'm over time. Thank you everybody for learning about Aura. And yeah, come join us. <laughs>